Hello all you wonderful gunslingers, we are here for another Eternal deck. This one is going to be around one of the buff cards that just came out on February 14th. So there's a bunch of recent buffs. We're going to be looking at Soulbringer this time, so we're going to be doing an aggro wisp deck. So Soulbringer is the card that got buffed, it used to be play away from the void and it wouldn't give it plus one plus one, now it does, so it does some cool things there. I'm going to keep this hand, we're going to jump onto the game, but I'll talk about it a little more in a second. We actually have the deck tech down below, if you want to see the full deck tech then you can go and check that out. But basically it's a lot of one drops and Soulbringer, a lot of aggro and tempo, you can see like Haunting Scream, and we're going to use things like Soulbringer and... Um, Shadowlands Guide to buy back all of our one drops over and over, and we've got Weary Spiteling as one of the other big ones. And we'll we'll have some spice that might show up here in a little while. I won't give away everything. I but big imagine. shout out to all the subs and patrons who make this possible. I do really appreciate it. Looks like we're against strangers, which is pretty gas, honestly. That should be fun. Um, this is there we go. Well, there's one of the pieces of spice. We've got unfinished business. So give one of your units plus five plus five. You'll notice it doesn't say until end of turn. And then you sacrifice it until at the end of turn or when it deals damage. Of course, uh, you just get it back with like Soulbringer or with the Shadowlands Guide or Haunting Scream. And you get to keep it permanently after that. We it'll no survive. longer have the sacrifice ability. All right. So we could unfinish business already and then just start screaming it back. We can actually just scream and then oath book. I kind of like that. This is a lot of damage really fast. And we're going to have it as a 7-7 seven, seven, and then an 8-8 eight, eight flyer immediately. With charge, of course. It's too bad that we don't have a Shadowlands guide to buy it back, but we'll... We'll find something to do with it soon, I'm sure. Crown Watch Press Gang. That is a pretty good start here. So we're going to Haunting Scream, pull back the Twilight Raptor, then play the Oath Book, and slam in for eight. All we have to do is dar draw a Dark Return, and we win the game, which is already kind of amazing. This is a really good start. We're in a little bit of trouble, though, if we don't get a Dark Return soon. Because I mean, right now we are a bit out of gas. We can go for Weary Spiteling, so it's not like the end of the world or anything. Far we from it. Where <laughs> so we'll see what we get. Ooh, I wish I had one more power, because being able to draw it You're with the, the Xenon Lifespeaker in play is real sweet. We'll get the Spiteling. Just because it's so good with the Soulbringer, it's something we can actually buy back. And it gets flying too, so it becomes another big threat in the air right away. Won't have to sacrifice it or any of that garbage. Slay. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we're taking a bit of damage, but we have it where, like, we one card isn't out where we just win the game. We can chump lock with Weary Spiteling and then buy it back. Like, this is acceptable for me. Actually, even better. Oh, sorry. I, yeah, I miscalculated. I was thinking, man, we could just ultimate Zen and Lifespeaker right away. It might have been better to do that. Mm, probably not. I really want the Weary Spite lean down. Yeah, Triumphant Stranger is what I was afraid of, because they got that petition. So this could be scary, depending on what they get. And obviously, depending on what our draws are. Definitely block. And Dark Return. Give me that win. That is not it. We do get the Spite Lane. From death, life. So we get a nice big 4-4 flyer. And pass the turn, I suppose. One from many. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ooh, that's a pretty Our big one. Is broken. I'll definitely chump block the 8-9. I can't imagine that they don't attack with it. Yeah. So, block here, block here, block here. We just take two. I lose the Xenon, but that's okay. Haunted Scream, Dark Return, anything like that. Shadowlands Guide does not do it, right? It doesn't have charge. No, it does have charge. Yeah, I screamed it back. Okay, sweet. 
And that's game. Woo! Just in time. Our opponent is in fact dead. I just accidentally A spaced, so now they can choose to block the 4 3. Whew! Close. Oof. Game 2 start here. Does not have a usable hand, unfortunately. We can't play any cards in it. This one's good, though. This one's really good. We've got a Dusk Raider to start getting Berserk immediately, and we can have Xenon and Lifespeaker. Obviously, we're gonna try and lead with Weary Spite Lane. Oh, Han and Scream is yes. Definitely. Absolutely want that. Gudiculous. I like their name. I could just go for the Dusk Raider right now, and then try some things after. Nah, we'll just play Life Speaker instead for now. I want to get the Weary Spite Lane down as soon as possible. If we can find an unfinished business, it's something I want to do right away. We've got a Life Steal on that one. Not bad. Swing in and see what our opponent does, and then just slam a couple more units onto the board. With them being in Praxis colors so far, I'm not really worried about board wipe, so... I feel like it's fine to just flood the board pretty hard. Oh, wow. Okay. These are some pretty good draws. We could just ultimate the Xenon here, too. But I think we want to get down all of these units. This is sweet. <laughs> so fast. Our opponent's just not doing anything, either. They might play something like a Sandstorm Titan here, and if they did, that'd be a problem. And the Scoop. I was actually gonna un-attack uh, there because I didn't need to ultimate our Xenon Life Speaker, but yeah, that was real fast, and our opponent couldn't really do anything about it. I'm not sure what they kept, but obviously not enough removal. Maybe they had, like, uh, World Barrier Behemoth and a bunch of big things like that, like Moonstone Vanguard, thought that it would probably be good enough, but we just came out of the gates roaring, and wasn't a whole lot they could do about that. <sighs> Another really good hand. I'm thinking about that last game and how much it showcases, like, just Dusk Raider being stupid. <laughs> Dusk Raider can really end games fast if you just happen to draw multiple units off of it or first turn, which is exactly what we did. So we're going to go Shadow, Weary, Spite Lane, and then Crest, Spite Lane again. Maybe Life Speaker. Probably just two Spite Lanes. And then we've got the Unfinished Business. We need a power card. Time that quickens. shouldn't be too big of an ask. Just one power. Right? That's, I'm not asking the world. Just one power. Two power would be excellent, so we can get the Crown Watch, but I, I ain't greedy. I will definitely settle for one. I'm more than a little bit afraid of this. It's a good start. Bunch. Will they attack? I will absolutely block. Yeah. Okay, this does let me play both of these, which I think is okay. It doesn't mean that we're off of uh, unfinished business, but I'm alright with that. Oof, duh. Could triple block this. Doesn't seem like a wise decision, though. Yeah, the Titan's a problem. Dusk Raider. Not bad, not the best. Hmm. I think for now I bought him that. Turn 3 Sandstorm Titan is kind of rough. Turn 2 Teacher, Turn 3 Sandstorm Titan is a tough one to beat, for sure. I think we'll take the 5 block here. We're setting it up so that we've got Soulbringer. Now we might do something really insane. And by that, I'm going to do something pretty insane. We're going to attack. If our opponent blocks, that's actually good for us, because then we get the Soulbringer back, both of them. Okay. Deal. From death, life. That helped us out a lot. I'm glad they did that. Now we can unfinished business one of them, and if we find another way to get units back out of the void, we're in great shape. We've got blocks for everything now. 
I'm surprised that they did that. I think you really gotta pause for a moment sometimes when your opponent makes a play that's obviously bad and think, okay, why would they do that? Like, what, what would be the reason for it? Sure, it looks terrible. It's probably not good. But, but what if it is? What if there's something going on here? Because as it turned out, I had something going on. Uh, You're in the crowd watch. I don't just start with this. Maybe get life speaker. Hmm. Yeah, I'll start with life speaker. See if we get another unfinished business. I actually don't mind that. Then we'll pass. Moonstone Vanguard is scary. They've got just such a sick hand here. It's too bad that uh, we can't capitalize on their big mistake. We're getting a bit of advantage out of it. I mean, if they hadn't blocked the Xenon, we'd be buried already. But that really big mistake is probably not enough. Yeah, not with how incredible this hand is. One, two, three, four, five. They've had some good turns. Some decent ones. Slam in for nine. They'll just take it, which is more than fair. Come forth. We get a very large weary spite lane at least, an 11-11. If we have some way to kill that titan, Haunting Scream gets real gross. Oh, cool. They're just gonna give us a way to kill the titan. I'm pretty okay with that. This is actually lethal. I maybe should have even triple blocked. What if they have teleport? Yeah, I should have triple blocked. That's my mistake. Definitely should have triple blocked there. Just the one spite lean alone is lethal now, because we can scream unfinished business and pop them for 16. Pray that they don't have another Titan. What do you have? Well, they left all their power up, which is certainly scary. I'm still going for it, though. Oh, they have something. Okay. Hmm. Dissociate. Uh... Okay. Hmm. So it's five to Haunting Scream now. I can unfinish business, chump chump, and then try and win that way. Obviously a little sketchy. But it might be the best option that we have. No reason to play the power, there's nothing I get out of it. I have enough to play Haunting Scream already. If I draw another card that I can play for one, then I can just play the Shadow Sigil at that point. I don't need to give them any information about what I have. Mystic Ascendant doesn't do it for them. We've still got lethal. So I think we've got the game. All we have to do is chump block enough. We'll just block both, just to be super duper careful. Maybe they have Envelop, which... I mean, they're playing Dissociate, it's certainly possible, who knows. They're in a very interesting, like, mono time list here. So they're probably running a lot of those kind of hedge cards that you wouldn't necessarily see in other lists, just because mono time doesn't have a lot of answers to things. Nice! Woo! 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 Oh, we punished them real bad for blocking with that Sandstorm Titan. And then attacking with it. Made a couple of really big mistakes that actually let us have an end to that game. Because they could have buried us for sure. Like, they definitely had the advantage if they just played it a little bit safer with that Titan. But we got there. They didn't think about what we were actually doing with our deck. And just kind of played their own game. Didn't really think about, like, what my lines were to win. And I think that that's something that you really need to work on sometimes. Is look at our board and think, like, okay, well, we're locking down all the flyers... Is that maybe what my opponent's trying to do? Like, think of the colors that we're playing. Like, we played, you know, Dusk Raider kind of cards, and we're playing Weary Spite Lane. What kind of deck would have those? So you gotta ask yourself those questions sometimes.
Game four, sitting on a decent hand. We're missing Shadow. We've got the Dusk Raider, though. Yeah, I don't love it. I think that we just throw that one back. Oh, we're against Fryman again. It's the same person that we were playing earlier for the first game, Strangers. That's interesting, early on Strangers. Again, I'm up for a rematch. That was actually a close game. I'm interested. Like, I'm down. They might also not be on Strangers anymore. Dusk Raider. Problem here, I talk about this in the deck deck a bit, but we've got a lot of depleted power. Um, so you might look at the power base as a thing. I'm always worried about running too many non-basic power to have problems like this. Do we Dusk Raider? We don't have an actual like Dark Return to go with the Haunting Scream, but we do have Hidden Road Smuggler, which can get Last Chance. I'm thinking of Berserk. I think that that's worth it. Because we can set it up where we go Weary, Spiteling, and then we play the Dusk Raider. We'll use Hidden Road Smuggler to get Last Chance, and we can Haunting Scream this back, and then Last Chance it and have it have Berserk. As long as they don't kill the Dusk Raider in the meantime. But they are strangers, so they're not going to have a lot of removal. They're mostly just going to be trying to, like, goldfish us to death here. If you don't know what goldfishing is, it means they're going to kind of play it on their own and just try and act like we're not doing anything and just race past us. A little bit like what we're doing. We, shall find the way. we have a little more interaction, but not a lot. We're not real big on interaction in this deck. So we can just unfinished business, slam. If they want to chump block, that's cool. If they don't want to chump block, that's even better, because they just take much damage. I like that Unfinished Business kind of encourages people not to block like that. It helps us out a lot, that's for sure. We're not going to need Devour, so I can probably trade that away. I want to keep the Power card, because we might just go Hidden Road, Dusk Raider, and in the same turn, and then immediately last chance it. The shadows see what we do next us. turn. That's a pretty fast clock, so Stranger is scary. And pump by three already. We do get to go Dusk Raider, Haunting Scream, and then we can just Hidden Road Smuggler. Turn afterwards. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go for this. It seems pretty sick. So this puts them down to 10. This is already at 10. It doesn't even need the Berserk off of the Smuggler, or off of the Dusk Raider, I mean. So we've already got the win just off of Hidden Road Smuggler. Means that I might just want to Chump Block here. Or if they remove it, then it's not the end of the world. We ride. Sure. Okay. Well, we know for sure that we've got the win now. That's 7, 12 damage. I'm just going to take it for fun, because I want to have a Berserk unit. <laughs> it's the only reason why I'm doing this, but it's kind of a blast. Why not? A, only the best I can do what I want. Alright, I would like a last chance, please. Hey, I want 22 damage, thank you very much. Uh, this deck is just going off. This thing is going ham. I mean, we're playing against a lot of very meme decks at the bottom of Masters here, because that's kind of where I love to live. I'm, I'm just down here in the garbage, but, oh, it's such sweet garbage. How can you help yourself? Final boss time. We've got a decent hand. Again, it's all this depleted power. I do get to play a Twilight Raptor on turn 2, which isn't the worst, and then we can play Dusk Raider on turn 3. I think that I'll keep this. It's definitely dicey. We need some power cards if possible. But we already have a Dark Turn, which is... Ooh, nice. They've got the Fierce and the... Uh... Oh, and they are indeed Fierce. Okay, we're gonna have a pretty hard one here unless we draw a bunch of power cards. Haunting Scream. Haunting Scream Twilight Raptor is okay. I wish this was Weary Spite Lane. 
Really, really wish this was very spite lane because we could go spite lane, dusk raider, scream, dark return, and just smash them for like twenty. Hmm. This is a tough one. Like, let me think about the damage. We're gonna have a two, and then it's gonna. I mean, it's not even dying anyway. Hmm. I think we have to bottom that. I hate it, but... Because it's so sick if this is a Weary Spite Lane. I mean, Weary Spite Lane just blocks, dies. We can get it Berserk right away. I mean, it's just so sweet. We need our power cards. Yeah, I have to keep that. Hidden Road Smuggler can actually do things. They're going to have Torch here, looks like. Eileen's Intervention? Oh... Oh, are they just a Yeti deck? What is this? I, s I smell a little bit of spice going on over there. That's That seems like some spice. And I'm going to kill Crunch. I don't like being stuck on the back foot like this, but it feels safer to not let them have a Crunch here. Crunch is just explosive. Yup, they are indeed a Yeti deck. We can annihilate. If we draw power, we can annihilate Dusk Raider. Hopefully that's the thing. Or I can just do this. Annihilate Life Speaker is pretty good. It seems like they have Torch, but I'm willing to let that happen. Like, if they really want to Torch Xenon, that's fine. There's a lot worse things they could be torching, like Hidden Road Smuggler, the Life Steal feels like it might be a big deal right now. Yeah, Champion is sick. Oof. Shadowlands Guide. That's spicy. You know, I think I might just take this. I'm gonna get the Life Speaker too. We'll trade with the 4 2, and then we've got Life Speaker. If we draw power, we can play Crown Watch. Ow, that sucks. Hmm. Good draw. Really, really, really good draw. Power card, please. I'm gonna be risky here and sacrifice. Hopefully draw a power card. Do not draw a power card. Okay, I can block the 2-1, play Shadowlands Guide. I don't love it, but it gives us something to do. Being stuck on the power here is really killing us. We don't have a lot of power in this deck. It definitely runs greedy. Oh, they've got Pummel, Torch. Oh, they didn't... Okay, yeah, just torches in the face. Yeah. Nothing I could have done about that. Just got stuck on the power. We are really, really close from stabilizing. We might have hidden road smugglered, but as it turns out, like, I mean, they just drew permafrost, and then they drew torch, and then they, like, they just hit gas, gas, gas. If we hit any power in there, then we definitely had that game. I mean, we were stuck with a bunch of cards in our hand, and the lifesteal would have been a big difference. We talked about that before in the deck deck about how Xenon Lifespeaker does a really, really good job if you can get it down against another aggro deck. And you can see it there, like, if we had actually just had a slightly better draw, where we'd have drawn, like, average and gotten just one more power card, we'd have very easily gotten there because of the Lifespeaker, but... Obviously, can't really change the past. Different game would have been different, says local streamer. <laughs> That's the way things work. Still, very happy with the way this worked. Uh, I mean, like I said, stumble at the end there, just a really bad draw. A little unlucky. But a close game anyways. I mean, we were this close to stabilizing, and I don't think it could have stopped us if we had gotten that power. So, very, very cool. Big shout out to the people that did send me a bunch of decks that were very, very similar to this one. I went over a lot of different ways that you can kind of build this list. So, I know that I always get this question, and people will always, like, talk in the comments where they're like, Bad deck, not competitive. I'm not necessarily saying this is competitive, by the way. This is just a fun deck. I like this deck. It could be. This one's actually got a little bit of potential if you tune it. And I do go over that a little bit more in the actual deck tech video. It's down below. But I like to just play decks for fun. If you want to see me do more competitive lists, like, let me know in the comments if you want to see me just, like, grind out some games with some of the top decks that are in the format, because that's not what I'm doing. I like my content generally to just be 
real weird wacky brews that are kind of fun maybe like tier two kind of things and just have a blast in the bottom of masters that's my jam and if you like to see that stuff i mean this is what's for you so hopefully you like this deck i think that this one's pretty solid the problem with this if it does become popular so even if this does become a tier one deck just to warn people if you're like thinking about building this deck you're really really on a tight budget it's the kind of deck that if it were to break through, it'd be pretty easy to hate out. There's a bunch of things that you can run that can kind of disrupt this deck. And I don't know that you could necessarily tune it that well. So like things like Adjudicator's Gavels are already a problem. And there's more hate that you can run for it. So it can kind of be an issue that way. The mana is definitely like a little bit of an issue. It's pretty greedy on its mana base. But there's some tuning that can be done to this, and it could be fairly competitive. I don't think it's going to be one of the top five decks, but it's not something that uh, you can ignore entirely. We saw what our opponent did when they ran their Sandstorm Titans into us and just assumed that our deck didn't do anything. We just crushed that one. Weary Spiteling scales very, very hard, and... This is a sweet little list, so I'm excited about it. I hope you have some fun with it, and I will be back again next week with more stuff. Uh, in the meantime, always check out my wonderful sponsor, InkGaming.com. They help me do what I do here for you. This is, in fact, my job, so if you give me a follow, give me a like, that's really, really appreciated. And if you've got a little bit of money and you join in the Patreon, that is also huge. You get the draft videos and stuff here a little bit early. Sorry, not draft videos, deck tech videos. I put those up on Patreon first, and you get access to, like, sub-movie nights and all kinds of things that we do in our Discord channel, so you can check out that. Have a good week!